Okay, hey you guys, this is Rihanna Allure. I'm so excited because I have not made a video in so long and I know I've been going for literally two months. I know. I didn't wait the whole summer, but it's okay because it's okay. Self-reflection, I gotta do better. But in this video, we're gonna do a girl talk. I'm gonna answer some of you guys' questions and some of the things that you guys asked me. I did a poll a couple, it wasn't even a couple weeks ago. It was probably a month ago, literally. And um, I'm gonna ask some of you guys questions. And then I had some other questions that I did a poll from like a while ago too that I still have on my phone that I never answered. So we're gonna do those. And thank you guys for sticking with me and bearing with me on this journey. And y'all also thank y'all for getting my recent video to 4.2. It might be at 4.3 by the time I record it. I don't know. But that video, y'all gained me a lot of more subscribers. I think I gained like 60 or 70. I'm not even gonna hold you. And y'all, I, I always do a good video and then I just go ghost and I need to stop doing that. But y'all, the goal is a thousand followers by the end of this year and I'm not playing. Okay, because I know I can do it. But yeah, so I'm going to, let me stop rambling. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and see y'all in the next clip. The notes right here. I was going to read them off my phone, but it's okay. But y'all like my new hair color? This was not even the color I was going for, by the way. I was going for a copper orange, a copper dark orange. And I end up getting like a reddish, orangish color. But it's still cute. So I'm definitely gonna, we gonna revamp this up. Like, I'm not even worried. So, first we're gonna start with the first question that somebody asked me on my girl talk is, how is life lately? Um, You guys, life has been really interesting, I must say. Even though I have not posted for these past couple of months, I can say a lot of things have transpired that was just very crazy over this whole summer. I ended up getting into an organization on campus. I was into the Top Jags. I don't think I ever told y'all that, but y'all did see me see my induction ceremony for Beta Gamma Sigma. So I was so happy to tell y'all that, like I'm a Top Jag, woo woo. I'm a Top Jag, um, so I was like, ooh, purr. Yeah, but <laughs> that's what school, um, I ended up, you know, I ended up making, I ended up building more relationships with my academic advisors and stuff like that. So I'm really happy about that. Like, it's always good to be involved on campus. And y'all probably like, girl, why haven't you graduated yet? We just know I could have graduated. I really could have graduated a year before I was supposed to graduate. But my academic advisor was not advising. So my sophomore year, I could not get in contact with her. And literally, I just said, I'm going to advise myself. Big mistake. Like when my kids go to college, I'm going to tell them, do whatever you got to do to make sure you find your academic advisor. Because I was looking, I didn't know who she was. And then when I found her, I could get in contact with her. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just do it myself. Big mistake. Should have never did it. Zero out of 10, literally. My YouTube has been growing. Get out of here, this bunny. My YouTube has been growing. It's been growing slowly, slowly because I have not been posting. And that's all on me. And I can honestly say, like, that's my fault. I know it can be bigger than what it is. And I'm not even tripping off that. But, yeah. And also, y'all, I went to Ghana. And this is going to lead into my next question. Um, You guys were so, where's the footage? Where's the footage? Sadly, I deleted the footage. And there is a valid reason as to why I deleted the footage. It wasn't because I didn't want to post anything. If somebody is involved in something that that I don't want to remember or more so like I don't want to post you on my channel type stuff, I'm not going to post the footage. But I it did end up making some friends on the trip to Tagana. It was very... It was a very eye-opening experience for people that ha I had already knew for like a long time, but then for people that I had just recently met. I did post pictures. I posted pictures at the resort. It was very, it was a very eye-opening experience for me. I mean, if you want to go to Ghana, I would say definitely go. It was very different, but I don't think I'm a <laughs> travel. I don't think I'm a travel out the country anytime soon though. I just, cause yeah, that was my first time on the plane and everything. And then we were flying to so many, um, airports now we flew delta and since our planes were so long they was feeding us and the airplane food actually good y'all airplane food is good honestly i see why they say the jfk airport in new york is they are so rude y'all get zero stars from me y'all were so rude y'all were yelling 
I, I got married at this one lady because she looked at our passport, saw we was going the wrong way. So we in this line. And so we in a group, like it's a group of us. We, we in a group. So, you know, the dean get out of line. So, yeah, I'm going to get out the line with the dean. Like, he know what he doing. I'm not going to stay in this line and get lost because you don't want us to leave. And so she kept mumbling stuff. Y'all, it's still going the same. Why are y'all getting out of line? Y'all holding up traffic. I'm like, how we holding up traffic if we getting out of line? You sound... Anyway, so I turned around and I said, ma'am, I said, first of all, you're supposed to be checking um our passports. You told us to get in this line. You were actually wrong. I'm supposed to go somewhere else. Yeah. The food was good, but y'all, long story short again, there is no footage from Ghana. I deleted it. Next is, how do I feel about the YouTube community? Um, I like this question. This is actually a very good question. Because I've been dying to talk about this. Like, I saved this question for this video because, who? Oh, let's talk about it. I, I'm going to say this. There's always going to be somebody doing something that, I'm sorry if I'm looking over here. Because this is where my uh, monitor is, but my camera is right here. So I'm, I'm looking at here to just make sure my hair and stuff is okay. Sorry, y'all. But y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, honestly, like I say, to, I, like I tell anybody who want to start YouTube, there's always going to be somebody doing something that you're doing. It does not matter. Me, huh? Please don't start. There's always going to be somebody doing something that you, that you want to do. There's always going to be somebody that likes something that you like. There's always going to be somebody who has the same hair color as you. Like, there is, somebody's always going to be doing something that you're doing. It does not matter. It does not take away from the fact that this is what you want to do. And at the end of the day, nobody can be you. So, when people say things, oh, YouTube's so oversaturated now. I don't even want to make YouTube anymore. It just sounds so cliche because... Look at how many makeup brands there are. There's 1,300. You know, it's so many makeup brands, just to say that. And what if and what if Rihanna was like, I'm not going to make Fenty Beauty. I'm not going to give us all these shades for the melanated community. I'm just not going to do anything because there's so many makeup brands out of there. You know, it took for Rihanna to make all those shades for our skin color. And you know, melanated skin for other... For other makeup brands that have been around for ages, for them to actually be like, oh, well, we need to add these colors. Well, we've been telling them that. Like, imagine if Rihanna didn't do that. You know what I mean? So, I just feel like, I, I always use that example because it's a good one. Like, she really could have been like, oh, they don't need me. But she did it, and people love Rihanna, and they love Fenty. I love Fenty. Like, it's really good. Y'all, my dog, she's trying to bark because I have the window open it to give me some natural sunlight. And she see people walking, so trying to make sure she calms down. She might walk in the video. As you can see her right there. And I just feel like, I feel like people use it as an excuse because I wouldn't even care. I don't care how many people are doing YouTube. I still was like, in 2020, I'm going to make me a YouTube. It was quarantine time. That was the best time to make a YouTube, honestly. She finna start barking, y'all. I just know she is. But that was the best time to make one. And I just feel like when people say stuff like that, especially on Twitter, it, I just feel like it discourages so many people who want to do a YouTube because they just thinking about what other people think. But don't matter. It doesn't matter what they think. If you want to do a YouTube, you do it. I don't think it's oversaturated because a lot of the times people do a YouTube and they feel like, oh, and they find out, oh, this is too much for me, so I'm going to just stop. So a lot of times people don't even finish it out all the way because they change their mind and they don't want to do it. So, you can look at it like that. Like, a lot of times people are going to weed out anyways. Like, also, it's okay for you to try something and not like it and just move on. You don't have to. Just because you make a YouTube don't mean you have to keep it. Like, I have friends that had YouTubes. And they was, they got like 4K, 5K, 7K. And they just stopped. Like, it wasn't for them anymore. And that's okay. Like, it's okay to stop. I don't think it's oversaturated. When people also say things like, People do the same thumbnails, the same content. Nobody's original. I feel like you can say that, but guess what videos you're clicking on? You're clicking on the videos where the girls are doing the maintenance vlogs. You're clicking on the videos where people are doing errands. They're going to Target and Sephora and Ulta. And they might go to Home Goods or Ikea and they come home. Like, that's the stuff that y'all interact with. So, I don't understand why y'all get mad at YouTubers for doing the stuff that they know that you're going to watch. Now, that's not to say, oh, we just copy and follow trends, but... Not this dog got the zoomies, y'all. Oh my gosh. Carly, you're embarrassing us on camera. Child. 
But I'm just saying, people say that, and guess where are the most watched videos by girls? They're doing a clothing haul. They're doing a makeup get ready with me. They're doing the stuff that y'all interact with, with the most. And for me personally, that's the type of stuff that I want to do on my channel too. Like, I want to do vlogs. I want to do hair stuff. I want to do makeup content because you can see I'm getting better at my makeup. <laughs> per. You know what I mean? So you can't get mad that we doing the stuff that y'all interact with the most, basically, is what I'm saying. I know I didn't say I'm putting emphasis on it because it's the truth. Y'all want us to do some outlandish stuff and be different. Like, I hate when people try to want people to be different. I said try to want want people to be different so bad then when there's people out there that are different y'all talk about them to the point where they morph into somebody else y'all really don't want originality for real now let me take that back you can still do that same content and still be original put your own little spice into it spin to it i just feel like when people say that too it's just y'all hating simple and yeah don't let nobody discourage you and all this stuff somebody asked me what i do collabs Honestly, you guys, I've answered this question before in a video, I know for sure. But I said also, like, I don't plan on doing collabs. I'm really trying to stop saying the word, like, in 2023 because, oh my gosh. I've said this before. Collabs, if I'm going to do a collab with somebody, for one, it's going to be somebody that I know and, like, I... <laughs> and that I actually have a connection with or we're friends i can't see myself doing a collab with somebody that i'm not friends with and we just met off social media and they just like oh you want to do collab no and i've had people i've had guys ask me to do a collab what are we going to collab about what are we going to collab about what what gives you like we going to collab on it don't make sense it wouldn't make sense for me to collab with somebody who do pranks and stuff like that and i don't do pranks on my channel question is what do i think about originality slash influencers um i'm gonna say the same thing that i said about youtube there are gonna be people who like the same thing like all of a sudden now everybody hates people who, who wear nude and white all the time and beige now it's sad sage babies why what's wrong with it i've honestly grown to like the color white and nude so much literally if you go in my closet it's like a whole section that's dedicated to nude and white clothing it's just, it's simple. It goes with everything. You can't go wrong with it. You know what I mean? But yeah, you see a lot of people who dress like that now. I think it's cute. I think, I like it. But we, just like I said about the makeup stuff earlier, like, there are gonna be people, there are gonna be people that like the same thing that you do. You can't do nothing about it. All I'm gonna say is nobody that can wear it like you or be like you. <laughs> so yeah and then also y'all the stuff that y'all interact on y'all feed is what y'all gonna see the most so if you're interacting with stuff like that and that's all you see then maybe that's what you like and you just be in denial with yourself because when i go on my feed i'm seeing sims content because i look i play the sims i'm a gamer girl i play the sims i see hair because i love looking at different hairstyles different hair colors i see photo inspo like how you want to take pictures all this stuff, like, that's what I see, but that's why I interact with the most, and that's what I want to see. So, if you want to see something different, stop interacting with the same stuff. I feel like you're, like, they have it to where now your feed is tailored to what you like to see. The question is, how do I feel about influencers? Um, I feel like a lot of influencers nowadays, they don't want to influence. I feel like people just want the followers. They want the fame. They want the attention. They're really not trying to help anybody because they'll literally post. You're supposed to be a fashion blogger, blogger, whatever you want to call it. So you're supposed to share where you get your outfits from so you can help people, you know, dress. And you get mad when they ask you, where did you get this top? Where you get this shirt? Then y'all have the audacity to say, y'all literally be asking us for where to get something. And it's a basic tea. You know how hard it is to find a good basic tea? If that basic tea look good on you, I want to know where it's at. But y'all have a hard time wanting to tell people, tell people where y'all get y'all stuff from, but you want to be an influencer. I don't like that. I don't like influencers who gatekeep. Like, trust me, nobody is trying to be like you. Nobody is trying to mimic your lifestyle. If I see something that I like and you're supposed to be an influencer, you're supposed to influence me to buy items and you post them and you don't ever want to share where you get it from, but then you want to go around and talk, ooh, people just don't know how to dress. People can't do this. Like, what are you helping here? 
I feel like a lot of people want to hop on this influencer wave and they just they don't have the influencer personality. You don't even have to ask. If you tell me something looks nice on me, I'm going to say, hey, thank you. I got it from so and so and be, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I genuinely want to help you. I'm not going to sit up here and be like these influencers. And these influencers think they slick, y'all. They will literally t only tell you where they got something from when they know it's not coming back in stock or it's sold out. Them is the only two times, well, three. Or when you bully them in the comments. Like, why do I got to bully you to tell me something and you're an influencer? Like, a lot of these influencers, they be on their mean girl stuff. And I ain't got time for it. Like, don't say you want to be an influencer. Just say you want to be known, Okay. Just put known in your bio. Don't put influence in them up. I just want to be known. Thank you. And that's what I got to say about that because it really makes me mad because they give a bad rep to people who actually genuinely want to be influencers. Me personally, I want to be an influencer because I want to help people. And I like dress. I like doing girly stuff. Ah, taking pictures. But they give a bad rep to people like me because they don't want to share. They want to be bougie, stuck up. If y'all influencers, be nice, be kind. Like, don't be doing the most because you got a little clout because you ain't got to be like that, okay? Be an influencer because you genuinely want to, not because you want to get free stuff or free hair, free clothes. So this is a good one. I got this question a while back too, but I'm going to still reiterate some of the stuff because it's very important and I have some new stuff to add. For starters, when you're first starting out on YouTube, don't listen to know what, what nobody else got to say. Do not sit and wait until you have a camera, your lighting equipment, none of that. Because when I first started on my YouTube journey, I had my iPhone. At the time, I had an iPhone Max. No, XR. I had an iPhone XR. And I literally had to prop my phone on books. And I'm at like a big, tall shelf. And I put my lamp on top of the uh, shelf. I started with that and then you know I use my natural lighting in my bedroom but I started with it you don't have to have the ring light you don't have to have this camera that I got you don't have to have this stuff but you know once you build up you know your followers and stuff by all means buy it you know what I mean but if you're just starting out you don't need this stuff because honestly y'all I was never I would say I'm never gonna get a camera I'm, I don't even need it but I got it though I got a camera. <laughs> I got a camera mainly because I wanted to find a way to easily export my stuff to my um, laptop. And a phone, I feel like with a phone it was harder. So I got a camera because I wanted to, me getting this camera will force me to get a MacBook. So that's why I got this camera so I can get a MacBook. But I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs> All you need is some lighting, natural sunlight, and a phone and you're good. You're good. I'm telling you. And just a couple editing apps when you want to do some little spunky, frisky stuff. Yeah, just get some editing apps. While we're on the topic of editing apps, um, you really do need CapCut. I'm really thinking about buying CapCut Cap Cut Pro. I'm really thinking about buying it. I think it's $300 a year or is it $300 like if you buy it all together? I don't remember. But it do cost a lot. I, it's $299 for sure. But CapCut really is that girl. CapCut really has everything. You don't even need to buy the Pro. But buy the Pro when you become more seasoned and you just know how to edit and use editing software. But CapCut, CapCut is that girl. I use Canva. Y'all, I didn't know how good Canva was until I started doing projects with Canva in my classes. Canva is that girl. I have made some of my best thumbnails with Canva. Canva is that girl. I have not went back. I made one thumbnail on my, um, on Canva one time and I never went back. When I first, still now, I still make my own banners and stuff like that. And, um, let me go see. I got all my apps. Well, I showed y'all my apps on my phone in my last video. You're going to need Fonto and you're going to need the Eraser app. Those are your girls. And also, y'all, y'all gonna need YouTube Studio and the YouTube app on your phone for obvious reasons. YouTube Studio, Studio shows you your analytics. It just, it's a really good app to have. My brother does YouTube too, and he also recommended getting like the subscriber count. It basically tells you your subscriber count, but you can see that when you go on YouTube, so you really don't need it unless you want it. But it's good to have. When you first start on YouTube, do not, do not do those follow trains. 
it's a waste of time because nowadays it's not about how many followers you have it's about the engagement it doesn't matter that you have 150k followers now me personally for the life of me i don't understand how y'all begin to all them followers and then y'all just disappear and not only do y'all disappear y'all delete y'all videos you know even though you're not posting all the time you know you can still make money and you're not even posting anything i don't get it but yeah also y'all don't do not take those big breaks those big breaks you're building bad habits one time i had like a streak I had posted, I think, three or four videos back to back, and I gained 150 subscribers just by doing that. I think I posted, I posted a video every five days. So 15 days, I was gaining like 100. I gained in total 150 subscribers, and that was literally all in one month. So that just goes to show you it's doable. For don't do those follow trains. I'm telling you, don't do them because. I would rather you have somebody that follows you and not expect to get a follow back and actually watch your content and for you to have somebody following you just because you do YouTube and they never watch anything. They probably have you on mute and they more than likely are going to unfollow you after you follow them. Because when I first started my YouTube, I said, y'all, you know, I posted it on my uh, Twitter and I was basically like, you know, I started a YouTube and it was getting a lot of engagements. This, this was my old account. I should have kept her. Like she was booming, but I deleted her. And, um, yeah, so I said my goal for tonight is 50 subscribers. So, you know, people was commenting and subscribe their uh, YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, okay, like, I'm feeling the vibe. So I was like, everybody come and y'all YouTube channels. I'm going to follow y'all back. Ah. So I was so happy, right? So when I went to sleep, I had in total 76 subscribers. When I woke up in the morning, I was down to 50. So they was being petty. <laughs> you said you wanted 50, right? <laughs> Carly. No. No. Ah! Oh my gosh. I'm finna kick her out the room, y'all. But literally, they were being so petty. I'm like, I, I know I saw 76 when I went to sleep. So how are we at 50? So literally, I went and I unfollowed everybody. That I was a little mad. I'm just like, oh, YouTube community is a little cutthroat like they will do anything just to have a lot of subscribers but they don't want to follow nobody who's doing the same thing that they're doing that's what i that's also what i've noticed about a lot of youtubers um they really just want people to follow them and just interact with them they don't want to support anybody else's youtube unless the only time somebody is going to support your youtube is if you're doing if you have a bigger following than them which is really sucky but that's why I say I would not do collabs. I don't want to do stuff like that. Like, I want people to support me for me and because you like what you're seeing. Not because you want to, because you're expecting somebody to be on my channel all the time. Every time I post my, um, my YouTube, my a YouTube video to my page, they always say sub for sub and I always tell them no. And then you got people that get me. I'm like, I'm not going to follow you for you to immediately unfollow me. Like, I be telling people, no, I'm not doing a sub for sub because people unfollow. And I say the same thing every time and people still get mad. I'm like, you was probably going to follow me anyway. That's why you mad. I'd rather just follow people that I like and I'm not expecting to follow back and vice versa. I want people to follow me and not expect to follow back. You know what I mean? But yeah. And then also, I would say be careful of who you post in your YouTube videos. I have posted videos with people that I'm no longer friends with anymore. And I want to delete them off my channel. But I know if I delete them, my watch time is going to go down. Long, it's going to go down. And I don't want that to happen. So I have to leave the videos up. And it sucks. But I think, I don't know if you can cut people out of videos like when you have posted them. I don't know. But yeah, I would say don't post friends unless y'all have been friends for like over a year. Or you know that um y'all are going to be friends forever. Also, you don't want nobody problems coming on to your channel that you don't know about and vice versa. That's why I also say when you're starting out, just make sure you just post you. Like, it's about you. You don't have to post all your friends to make it, oh, I'm always doing. You don't have to do that. You really don't. The next one is about relationships. So... My friend Hey Hey asked me this. So I don't know if you mean about friendships or relationships like dating wise. I'm just going to wrap friendships and relationships all together in one. You guys. The best advice I could give you about both friendships and relationships. Stand on your boundaries. 
Stand on business. <laughs> stand on business. Stand on your boundaries. Stand on business. And if anybody tries that, just cut them off. And honestly, I might be the cutoff queen because literally I can de I can detach myself so easily from somebody. And it might not be a good thing, but I know once something has been crossed or I feel like something is out of line, I'm, there's no rekindling anything. There's no redating. After somebody has crossed the boundary, if I was to ever become cool with them, that's me basically telling them that it's okay what they did and it's really not. You have to make people stand on business. Stay on your boundary, stay on business. And a lot of times, you know, people who are meant to be in your life, they're going to respect your boundaries. Even when they get mad, they're not going to disrespect you. They are not going to do anything to provoke you. They're going to just, okay, this is the boundary. I respect you. I love you. I'm not going to go there. You know what I mean? So you just, when you stand on business and your boundaries, it gets rid of a lot of, why they stop that car right there? Let me see what they doing. Sorry, you guys. I just had to make sure because he stopped right in front of my car. I'm just like, bro, like, you tripping, dog. All right. <laughs> I'm really bubbly this video because I'm so happy that my makeup turned out right. And this hair color looks really good on me. And this was not even the color I was going for. I feel like this color is more, like, bright and not discreet. And this color is not discreet by any means, but, Yeah. Basically what I was saying, when you stand on business, the people who are meant to be in your life are going to be in your life. Um, one thing with me, I've noticed with relationships and friendship, when it's time for me to leave, it's time for me to leave. And my biggest indicator of when it's time for me to leave a friendship or a relationship is I have a dream. I will have a dream. I won't remember the gist of the dream, but I'll know at the end, like, basically, you and this person wasn't friends anymore. And literally... It'll be a couple of weeks later or a month or so later, they'll do something just so out of line. And it's just like, okay, you are right. My dreams, my dreams, you guys, my dreams do not lie to me. And it's a little, it's a little bit scary. It could be just my subconscious, just like, okay, when you was feeling this all along and you just dreaming about it. But I'm gonna think, I'm gonna lean on the fact that my dreams are real and they don't lie to me. Once I, once I had a dream, if you do anything, I mean anything. It's done it's a done deal like i'm not even playing around with you simple <laughs> now since we're talking about relationships um we're going to talk a little bit about boundaries somebody asked about boundaries um basically what i said for relationships people know what ticks you off like i don't care what anybody says like i really cannot stand people that you have been friends with who purposely try to um purposely try to get a reaction out of you as well as your partners family members all the above like what are we doing here when you stand on your boundaries, you just you just hold people accountable and you stand on business. Like, your boundaries, if you don't have boundaries, you if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for anything. And it is so true. So, whatever your morals and standards align with, don't falter. Like, keep them. <laughs> Stick to them. Don't let anybody try to make you, oh, well. Because also, this happened to me recently. When I cut my friend out, people were trying to convince me to still be friends with her. And I was just, no. It wasn't happening. Literally, it was not happening. And it was making me mad because how are you going to tell me to lower my boundaries, my standards, my morals, what I believe in, just so I can be friends with someone? So, no. But we are on red flags. Um, <laughs> y'all love asking me about friendship stuff. Me, personally, I'm going to tell y'all my red flags. Um, my one of my biggest red flags are people who cannot communicate or choose not to um be forthcoming and what's really wrong with them another red flag for me is when people try to make you feel bad for not having the same experiences is she okay okay i also do not like when people try to make you feel bad for experiences that, that you didn't have that you didn't have any control over like a lot of my friends that I have lost, it all boiled down to jealousy because people feel like I'm privileged, privileged, or they feel like I'm just rich. Just I just never really had to struggle, and I feel like people will literally hold it against you and be like, "Oh, well, you don't understand. I feel like I don't have any really, really big responsibilities, so I just have extra money." Like I don't, you know what I mean? And I feel like so many people at college. And I don't, and people are going to say, that doesn't mean they're jealous, but 
when you have had friends who didn't come from the same lifestyle as you and then y'all always butt heads. The group of friends that I told you that I had cut off while I was in college, they would literally always try to make me feel like I was slow because I didn't I didn't have street smarts. I didn't have street smarts because I literally like that was I was never I never had an experience to where I needed street smart. So I don't know, like, if somebody say this, that they mean this or something. You know, like, I don't know that stuff. So you can't fault me for what I don't know. That doesn't make me slow or dumb. Like, I just don't know. I've had friends who had more than me. I've had friends that had less than me, but I always treated them the same. I didn't treat them differently. I didn't try to make them feel bad about their circumstances or anything of that sort. So it really makes me upset when people try to make me feel bad about just having to not struggle. I feel like that is the goal. You're, you're supposed to have a better life than your parents. So I guess what what the issue comes in is when people still have the same life that their parents had when they when they were their age or even worse but once again that shouldn't fall back on your friend who had nothing to do with it another red flag for me is when people don't post or support now i was watching a video the other day of Aaliyah's face i think it was an old one or a new one and somebody asked basically how would you feel if your friend doesn't promote your business and basically Aaliyah was like you know Sometimes your friends are not your target audience and you know sometimes you can't get mad at them because if it's not tailored to them or they're not interested in it then they're just not gonna do it. So I had to take a look and be like okay maybe they're just not interested but I can't let it slide how people who don't post repost my stuff don't repost my YouTube, my hair page, my pictures on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Y'all don't do that. But then y'all come and ask me for like um, clothing advice or, oh, should I put this and this together? Or y'all would ask me for YouTube advice, but you have not reposted not a single thumbnail or banner that I have posted to my page to promote my YouTube. I, that's why I have a problem with it because you feel like I'm good enough for you to come to and ask advice and opinions on this that and the third but you don't feel like i'm good enough for you to repost and share um what are my goals for this year this year's almost over my goals for this year is to really hone in on my youtube and i know i'm picking the worst time to hone down on it because school starts in two weeks so i know i'm gonna be busy with school i'm in a lot of clubs and stuff so i know i'm gonna be busy but i'm going to i'm definitely gonna get back on my youtube stuff i was scrolling through my phone recently and um you know how when your phone just slides all the way up on accident so i was looking at my pictures from 2021 and i was eating like 2021 and even 2022 like the first half of 2022 i was eating with the pictures i was consistent i was doing so good my reach was so good and then i got to 2023 and i was just I, I was a little disappointed in myself because I know I wasn't taking pictures like I should have been. And I love taking pictures. I love posting pictures and all that stuff. And I knew I was slacking. Like my reach went down because I was, I took so long to post. And um, yeah, I wasn't really posting on YouTube either. And it was just... I gotta get back on it. I need to do what I gotta do. I really do want to get a MacBook this year. Like I was talking about earlier, I really want to get a MacBook because I feel like that would elevate me a little bit more because I have an HP and all the apps that I love to use, they're only for Mac or Apple products. So I can't use it on my HP and it's so hard trying to find an editing software for an HP. It's, I need a MacBook. I just need to get active on all my social medias. I want to be an influencer. Seriously, I want to be an influencer on YouTube, all them platforms. So I need to get back on it, doing what I got to do because I know I can do it. I've done it. I've started over and went up like that, but you just got to be consistent. So that's what I want for myself. Also, there are, another, there are a couple of personal goals that I have, but I'm not going to say on camera. But I do have some personal goals that I really would love to see happen. I'm thinking of two off my head, but I know it's more. And the first thing, I just want to go out, have a good time. And uh, there are so many goals that I have that are just floating in my head. But I just can't 
I don't, I don't know how to word it. But I have so many goals, you guys. I want to finish furnishing my room. I know that's not going to happen this year, but I want to get a neon sign for my room, y'all, and put it right. Because my dad, he hung up my mirrors. So, my room is coming together. I love my room, you guys. I'm thinking about putting a vanity. I was going to put a clothing rack back here, but I'm thinking about putting a vanity now. So, I don't know yet. But yeah, I, your girl got goals. Your girl got goals. Just know it. And this is the last one. This is from my girl. She says, how to be more confident in your body. Honestly, I'm I'm struggling with this too. Like, I feel like that's a part of the reason why I haven't been taking pictures because I'm not as small as I used to be. And that's because I recently found out that I have PCOS and, I, and that contributes to weight gain. So when I found out about that, I was like, okay, I feel a little bit better. I'm still skinny, but it's just like, I used to be skinnier. So... Like, there, there was a point in time where I never went over 128 pounds. Like, I was small. So, I don't know. But, yeah, I know what PCO is. It really, you know, it really it really affected the way that I looked at my body. But I know I'm still cute. I'm still that girl. Like, <laughs> I'm going to still take pictures. I'm going to still get out there. You know what I mean? So, I would just say if you want to feel confident, just look at yourself in the mirror and give yourself a compliment. Like, it's something that you're going to like about yourself. Like, me personally, what do I like about myself? I think my lips are so pretty. Literally. And I think I have the cutest little cheeks. Like, <laughs> people always say I have chipmunk cheeks. Like, my mom, she used to pinch my cheeks all the time. He's so chubby. I'm just like, oh my. Like, they used to get on my nerves. But I think I have the cutest little cheeks. I have the cutest little smile. I love my puppy dog eyes. Like, my friend, my best friend loves to cut my dog, my eyes, puppy dog eyes. Like, I love, it's so much stuff that I like about me. I also like, y'all can't see my freckles. Not freckles, they're moles. Beauty marks. They started beauty marks to turn to moles. So, I'm starting to get moles on my face and, like, freckles and beauty marks. And I'm so happy, like... I'm so excited because my mom, she has so many freckles on her face. Oh, look at the kids walking from school. Oh, my God. School started for them. And, like, I'm starting to get freckles. And my mom, she had, like, a lot on her face. Like, it was right here in this area. And I have some on my neck. Like, I'm so excited. People are like, that is so random to be excited about. But my mom is gorgeous. So, I look just like her, too. So, it's just like, oh, my God, I'm going to look like her. Like, you know, so that's, like, I'm really excited about that because they're coming in. I have, like, two that are, like, right next to each other. I call them my ice cube uh, for moles because he got two on his um, side of his cheeks. But, yeah, like, it's stuff that, you, it's something about your body that you're going to like. So, I just remember that you're not, you don't feel comfortable in your body. You can always change it. That's what I, that's what I always have to tell myself. I could really get up today, go run go work out and continue doing this for like a year or so and i'll be there but i just gotta get past the part of getting out the bed you know and working out for real <laughs> but yeah like just remember if there's something that you don't like about yourself honestly you can always change it i feel like if you don't like anything just change it and if you do just look in the mirror and be like i'm that good like <laughs> yeah so that's what i would do but like that's my advice on that so i thank you guys all so much for watching this video make sure you stay tuned for other ones that are coming soon i am doing a clothing haul i was supposed to do the clothing haul months ago y'all but now that we back to school season time we're gonna do it right now so <laughs> yeah stay tuned for my other videos and see you guys in the next one make sure to like comment and subscribe and thank y'all for getting my last video to four point some k thank y'all y'all are so Besties, and see y'all in the next one. Bye.